we're seeing a lot of stuff on social media about a, a spiritual conversation, but I feel like a lot that you engage with might make you think that right now in lockdown, if you if you have a bad emotion, if you're feeling down, if you're feeling hurt, if you've got a past, if you've got a present, um, if you're in a mess right now, what would God care? Because you know, you should have. Like, in fact, God is judge. And as judge, He's judging you. Good morning and welcome to this episode of Light in the Darkness. Today we're going to have some fun. We're going to talk about the Lord. We're going to have a good time together. But before we get started, I wanted to say thank you so much for watching. There are literally thousands of people tuning in every single day from all over the world. And could you do me a favor today? Use your flag emoji. Throw that up in the comments below. Let us know which country you're watching from. It's a blessing to be able to tell you some good news in a dark world. Bring some light into your home. Uh, today we're going to be looking at probably one of my favorite pieces of content at the moment, one of my favorite pieces of film. We threw it up on Sunday, showed it to people, and it literally has gotten one of the biggest responses that we've ever had at Redemption Church. And I want to encourage you, go back to our most uh, recent sermon called Thirst for Truth. It's up on all of our platforms, YouTube, Facebook, our website. Um, it will bless you because I actually taught from this clip. We are going to today again be joining into uh, the Chosen TV show. And this is a show that has touched my life. Myself and Tara literally watched the entire season in a couple of days. It's eight episodes and you can only get The Chosen on their app or on their website. It is funded completely by uh, crowdfunding. They got no funding from corporates, no funding uh, from Hollywood or film companies. It's been totally funded by the individuals. And the whole heart is to show people what Jesus would have been like through the eyes of those around him. You know, he did the most incredible miracles, but it wasn't this spectacular uh, kind of way. He, he didn't have necessarily this big show. He had to live around these people whilst he performed these miracles and walk with them. And I found this show probably the best description or the most accurate uh, portrayal of a Jesus character from what I believe him to be from scripture uh, that there has ever been before. So I really want to encourage you, you'll love it. And even people who aren't religious, who don't go to church will love it because it's completely and utterly relevant to our society. I wanted to talk again from a clip that we used recently in our most recent sermon at church where I spoke of, are you thirsting for truth? Because it's a clip where Jesus encounters the woman at the well. And I love this story, but today I wanted to go back there. We're going to watch it together again um, because honestly, this is such a relevant word for now. I think people right now are asking the question, am I a good Christian? Will God hear my prayers? Will God care what I think, what I need, what I feel? Because we're seeing a lot of stuff on social media about a spiritual conversation, but I feel like a lot that you engage with might make you think that right now in lockdown, if you if you have a bad emotion, if you're feeling down, if you're feeling hurt, if you've got a past, if you've got a present, um, if you're in a mess right now, what would God care? Because you know, you should have. Like, in fact, God is judge. And as judge, he's judging you based on your actions, based on your decisions. Many of you right now are, are questioning whether you chose the right career, whether you chose uh, the right life, the right country, the right place. You know, there's so many decisions people are making right now. The pressure is overwhelming. I found myself the other day, just looking at my kids sleeping, and I found myself actually getting fearful. Um, and, and I was like, what is this feeling, this emotion stirring up? And I started to realize that I'm responsible for these kids and that their lives and their futures right now in the natural are completely uncertain. This world is completely uncertain. And I found myself getting fearful because I love them so much. How can I take care of them? How can I as a dad be a better dad? How are we going to pay these bills? How are we going to live? And these are just natural emotions. And in that moment, you might think as a weak person, as a fearful person, as a panicked person, as a person who's made so many mistakes, why would God hear? Why would God care? Why would God want to get involved in my situation? Because I haven't done everything 
perfect. I haven't been this good Christian. I haven't been this devoted follower of Jesus. And here's the thing. That is so not the character of God. When God comes into your life, whenever there's a spiritual encounter with the person of Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit, it is never to condemn but to save, the Bible tells us in John chapter 3, verses 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever right should believe in him will not perish but have eternal life. That's a verse most of the world has heard. But the verse after defines the character of God. For Christ did not come into this world to condemn it, but to save it. This clip where Jesus encounters the woman at the well, shows you what it is to have a God moment, what it is to have a God encounter. A God encounter in your daily life is not about condemnation, right? It is totally about salvation. Now, I'm not telling you that God doesn't lead you in wisdom, lead you into all truth. But before he can lead you, he needs to love you. You need to first know you're loved before you can be led. Have you ever noticed how an animal that has been in an abusive upbringing is nervous of a new owner, even if that new owner has its best interest at heart? Why? Because it hasn't had love, therefore you can't lead it. If you call a dog that's been raised in an abusive environment and you save it or you rescue it and now you adopt it and you've got all these toys, all this food, it will be in a corner nervous, want to bite, want to lash out because all it's known is abuse. You see, when God comes into your life, he doesn't come in with a big stick. He doesn't come in to, to beat and abuse. No, even his correction is for your blessing. And it doesn't feel like condemnation. Correction is very different to condemnation. Condemnation pours shame on you. It literally says you're a failure. Correction says you don't need to remain a failure. Uh, a condemnation would say you're not good enough. Correction would say you are better than this. Uh, a condemnation would say you haven't done enough. Correction would say, hey, there's some things we can start doing that will change your life forever. But correction of God always speaks to you from the identity God already sees you in. And so what I think is so interesting is in this exchange between the woman at the well and Jesus, Jesus doesn't back off from what he sees for her. He lets her vent. He lets her question. He lets her uh, share her raw emotion of her upbringing and her failures and even her heart's desire that God would do something with her life. And he doesn't walk away. He doesn't uh, say, oh, well, I can't work with you. you. You said one bad word. You know, people often say, how can you question God? How can you? You know what? The Bible has recordings of the most amazing men and women of God having conversations with God that don't go that religiously well, where they're honest and they're raw. And they say, where are you? I don't even know if you're here. I don't even know if you're hearing me. I don't even know if you care. But you know what? Have that conversation with God because you know what will happen? Even in you reaching out in fear or frustration, he will come in with his grace and his love. And he's so gentle. And he'll let you just vent, get it out, and he'll say, I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. And you know what? After the venting, you realize this is getting me nowhere. And you start to listen. And you start to let him love you. And his correction comes in and says, hey, I've got a better plan for you. I've got a purpose for you. And if anything today, I want to encourage you in one thing. Let him save you. I'm not just talking about the once off time where you've said, maybe I believe in Jesus Christ. I'm talking about every day we wake up. It's another opportunity for Jesus to be our savior, to be our Messiah, to be our incredible, loving, kind, good shepherd. Every day we need saving. Even right now in Corona, you need to be led. You need to be led in your emotions. You need to be led in your life. You need to be led in your family, led in your finances. You need to know that God is going ahead of you, before you, taking care of you. And one of the last things I want to highlight before we go to this clip is this. I love the fact that Jesus looks this failure of a woman, this complete reject of society. And he says, people might have rejected you, but the Messiah hasn't. People might have overlooked you, but the Messiah came here just for you. You know what? If anything today, know that God will come into your house just for you. Come into your situation just for you. Come into your mess just for you. Today, let it be a light in your life, knowing that he's not just God, but he's your savior. Let's go to that clip in The Chosen as we watch together, and then we'll receive communion and close out for the day.
give me a drink? Did you hear me? That's bad, huh? What? You, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a Samaritan, and a woman. I'm sorry. I should have said please. You know, it's not safe for you to be alone out here. Nor you. Why haven't you come with others? Why so late in the day? Don't women come to the wells in the, the cool of the morning? Yeah, well, none of them will be seen with me, so I have to come at noon in the heat, as you have so kindly reminded me. Why won't they be seen with you? Long story. I, I'd still like a drink of water if you can spare it. Amazing what a parched throat will do. Aren't I unclean to you? Won't you be defiled by this vessel? Maybe some of my people say that about your women, but I don't. Yeah? And what do you say? I say if you knew who I am, you'd be asking me for a drink. Really? And I would give you living water. Wood. Except that you have nothing to draw water with, and this is a deep well. Besides, what do you need from me if you have your own supply of living water? Wrong story. But Jewish water is better than Samaritan water. Hmm? That's not what I said. Are you a better man than our ancestor Jacob, who dug this well? Your water is better than his? I know, Jacob. And everyone who drinks this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks the water that I give him will never be thirsty again. Wouldn't that be nice? The water I give will become in a person a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Really? Yes, really. Prove it. First, go and call your husband and come back. I will show you both. I don't have a husband. You are right. You've had five husbands. And the man you're living with now is not your husband. <laughs> oh, I see. You're a prophet. You're here to preach at me. No. Usually the one good thing about coming here alone is I can escape being condemned. I'm not here to condemn you. I've made mistakes. Too many. But it's men like you who have made it impossible for me to do anything about it. How? Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain. But you Jews insist Jerusalem is the only place for true worship. They say that because the temple is there. Yeah, exactly where we're not allowed. I'm here to break those barriers. And the time is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. So, where am I supposed to go when I need God? I've never received anything from God, but I couldn't thank Him even if I did. Anywhere. God is spirit, and the time is coming and is now here that it won't matter where you worship, but only that you do it in spirit and truth. Heart and mind, that, that is the kind of worshiper he's looking for. It won't matter where you're from or what you've done. Do you believe what I'm telling you? <laughs> Until the Messiah comes and explains everything and sorts this mess out, including me. I don't trust in anyone. You're wrong when you say that you've never received anything from God. This Messiah you speak of, I am he. The first one was named Ramin. You were a woman of purity who was excited to be married. But he wasn't a good man. He hurt you. And it made you question marriage and even the practice of your faith. Stop it. The second was Farzad. On your wedding night, his skin smelled like oranges. And 
To this day, every time you pass by the oranges in the market, you feel guilty for leaving him because he was the only truly godly man you've been with. But you felt unworthy. Why are you doing this? I have not revealed myself to the public as the Messiah. You are the first. It would be good if you believed me. You picked the wrong person. I came to Samaria just to meet you. <laughs> Do you think it's an accident that I'm, I'm here in the middle of the day? <laughs> I am rejected by others. I know, but not by the Messiah. And you know these things because you are the Christ. I'm going to tell everyone. I was counting on it. <laughs> Spirit and truth. Spirit and truth. It won't be all about mountains or temples. Soon. Just the heart. <laughs> you promise. I promise. This man told me everything I've done. Oh, he must be the Christ! <laughs> What is? You forgot your um. Foxy, your man, you told me everything I ever did. <laughs> wow, wasn't that awesome? You know, if you haven't watched The Chosen yet, make sure you go to check out their website, The Chosen. Dot TV, um, or you can check out the app on Android or Apple. You'll be blessed to watch the whole series, maybe so into it so someone else can watch it for free. But it really touches me to know Jesus cares so much for us. He's so patient with us. He's so kind with us. Uh, today, as we receive communion, I want you to see his suffering his sacrifice, but I want you to place your suffering, your problems, your hurts on him. It's not just about Jesus dying for everybody else and not you. It's about his body being broken for your wholeness, about his blood being shed for your condemnation, for your shame, for your guilt. You see, this is not just tradition. This is transformation. This is God moving in our lives, moving in our circumstances. And wherever you are right now, Join me in communion with your home, with your families. Take some bread or a cracker out to represent the body of Jesus Christ and some juice, um, any liquid to be the blood of Jesus. And in this moment right now, we're going to just speak over these into our lives. Whatever it is in your life, you can even speak privately into it. You can even speak your fears, your failings, your, your challenges, your health issues, your concerns, knowing that Jesus is your Savior today. Can you just take your cracker, your bread, speak together and say, this is the body of Jesus that was broken for me. My peace, my wholeness, my sound mind today comes from his broken body. All my sickness has been placed on his body at the cross. Thank you, Jesus, for healing me, for giving me wholeness for giving me peace. As we break this, know that his body was broken for us and partake and eat. We receive that today, Lord Jesus, in every body, in every home. If you can just take your liquid to be the blood of Jesus, we're gonna speak over this, say the blood of Jesus shed for me. Every sin, every failure has been paid for in full. Today, I don't need to fear my future. I don't need to be paralyzed in my present, but I can receive the fullness of the love and grace of my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Now we receive. 
Father, I thank you for each and every single person, family, and home watching today. God, that supernatural peace is theirs. Let them feel your love, your grace. Know you are with them today and every day to come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks so much for being with me on Light in the Darkness today. Our next episode is going to be awesome. Tara's going to have a special guest she's interviewing, and you're going to be so blessed. So we'll see you again tomorrow here on Light in the Darkness. Until then, be blessed.